Alright, alright, alright guys, let's go. It's time for a big best of three here in the EPT Weekly NA Cup. People have often pick the highest level players. They pick the Zests, they pick the Max Paxes and these guys. But I have picked these two players because this is going to be a glorious shit show. In the bottom right, we have a very intelligent Mexican caster who does a lot of wild, cheesy build orders. It is Jim Rising. Big fan of Nidus Swarmos when you least expect it, that sort of thing. But his opponent is the god of cheese, the god of cheeky plays himself. Up here in the top left, the guy who uh, basically popularized Mass Oracle and did a whole lot of dirty, dirty strategies. Uh, he, is, he is known for cannon rushes, for eliminating Jadong from WCS America and ruining his dreams back in the day. The Taiwanese powerhouse, it is Hass. One of the best cheeses out there in the game. He's going to skip a scout this game and do a very economic opening. Notice 16 workers on minerals the whole time, rallying onto gas. So it looks like a very standard opening for Haas so far. But he can pivot at any point into some wild shenanigans. So we'll see exactly how he goes. Behind this, it is, of course, just a hatch gas pool for Jim Rising, who has uh, one Overlord at home, watching for a cannon rush and one heading across the map. And Haas here pausing probes at 20 supply to put down a Nexus and then a Cybercore. And this is just so smooth because he skipped the probe until after the Nexus and the core goes down. That's just a, a really efficient delayed probe scout. If he was getting 12 pulled, those lings could easily, the Overlord would have spotted the probe. He could like avoid it, get in here, and probably just straight up win the game because Haas wouldn't realize until the Zerglings are arriving right now what's going on. And he'd probably straight up lose. But that's a risky stake. And he says, hey, let's just cross our fingers. There's no 12 pool. I don't mind a bit of a gamble gamb. And uh, that pile on there on the high ground is going to hide probably a Stargate, I would imagine, but we'll have to wait and see. No second gas. Oh my! No second gas. Okay, Haas is going very cheeky, guys. He's just going to do a gateway all-in. So um, Haas here on one gas, he's going to get out maybe one Immortal, but a very early Warp Prism. He's probably going to do, I would, I'd imagine, a five or six gate all-in attack. He might even proxy a gateway. Who knows? But uh, yeah, this is a, a real nasty play. Now, Jim is a player who's happy to sit on two bases sometimes. So he might say, look, I'm up against a cheesy weirdo. Let's just play two base Roach, which would be perfect for this scenario. Now that Overlord will get back to the high ground for now. Already a Zealot on the way? Wait, a Zealot? This early, really? Wow, okay, so he just wants raw material out there. That probe coming back in has not seen the third, and the third does go down a little bit later than most people opt for. But that's because Jim's just focusing on hitting his drone production, hitting his two-in jacks. He's got a third queen on the way now. And he's going to be Warp Prism first. Where are the... Okay, so we're going to see a whole bunch of gateways go up here, guys. Second gateway to wall off the base. He's trying to shuffle the Zealot of the Stalker. There we go. And uh, that Warp Prism is going to allow him to get rid of that Overlord. Where is the gateways? One gateway going down. He's, he's about to explode into these gateways, guys. Oh, man. And OV speed. OV speed's really bad against this. Because OV speed isn't going to scout this in time. This is, like, not a super fast overlord speed. It's good against almost everything, except this sort of exceptionally fast all-in. And Pass just diligently removes that. And he pushes across the map. He's going up to one, two, three, four, five, six gateways. Is he going to drop a seventh? It looks like he is. He's completely pulled off gas. Oh, my God, guys. He's doing a slow zealot immortal all-in. It's an A-gate, slow zealot. He's not even mining gas. He can't even warp in stalkers. But wait, wait, how does his immortal get across the map? Has he forgotten about his immortal? What is Haas doing? This is the worst all-in I've ever seen. It's too slow. Right? Is it? Oh my god. I mean, this Zergling's going to see the immortal coming. He really needs roaches. Zerglings do not beat these units. Stalker, look at that. Picks it up into the prism, keeps it alive. He's only got one Stalker and one Immortal for range damage. Everything else is just slow as hell. This is one of the most, you know, unmaneuverable, inflexible, shitty pushes ever. But it hits so goddamn fast. And he's just going to have so many Zealots that Zerglings and Queens aren't going to do that well. The Spines coming up, if they can finish, will be great. But Jim honestly needs, like, Evo Chambers blocking them or something. If those Spines go down, and he model on the Stalker will kill them. And that's just so much raw material. 32 probes of slow Zealots. Haas coming in with a wild attack right now. And Jim, he's only on 38 drones, but that even that might be too many against such a ridiculous push. The Spine Crawl is not able to finish there. And the Zealots are now in the mineral lines. This is really bad for Jim. He's got nine Roaches popping. But the Immortal and the Zealots are kind of on top of everything right now. So these Zealots are going to start getting on those Queens. He's got the Immortal there working. He does have the Warp Prism. There's nothing that can remove the Warp Prism right now. And that Immortal, as long as that Immortal keeps shooting Roaches, he's got it. Pass. 
I thought it was bad because the immortal is going to take too long, but you just look at how hard and fast that is. That is a deadly push. What a dirty, dirty way to take the first map. All right, let's go into map number two down here in the bottom left hand side in the red. And doing a 12 pull to make sure his opponent doesn't get away with those greedy openings again. This is Jim Rising. And in the top right in the blue, the Protoss player who's going to wall off the high ground to start. He literally is expecting 12 pool, I think, and wants to make his defense even easier for himself. A one base opening here would be incredible. Is he going to do double gas on one base? Oh, he's, yeah, he's going to do two gate. He's going to do a two gate adept. Oh my God, this is so good against Jim's build. It's Hass. Oh, wait, no, no, no. He's going for the cannon rush. Oh, but, but with an opening in the wall. Okay, so it's an expand cannon. But now he sees no expansion. He cancels the forge. No, no, go for the... Don't go Nexus. Is he going to... He's going to try and go super fast Nexus against this. Don't do that. Okay, he's just going to go single gate. It's still it's still totally fine for Hass. Does he drop a second gas, though, and opt for the tech here? Or does he just try to retake the low ground? Because Jim could delay that low ground a little bit. Mm, I think he might hide the probe over here. You could go take a sneaky base, but that's going to be really awkward in the follow-up. No gas. So he really wants to get the Nexus up. But the thing is, he's going to have to pull probes to keep that alive, I think. Because ah, the Zealot could get surrounded, unless he dances it to the minerals. Oh, he does not have money for that Nexus just yet. Jim comes in here. Oh, three Ling's going to get past. He's going to... Oh, he doesn't go past. I would have loved to see him go in there. But he says, no, 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 screw that. Let's go for the expand. And he goes for the Zealot. Can he get the surround? But no, the second Zealot's here. I think even with that much surface area, no, he splits the attacks up too much. Jim does not get enough focus fire, so he only kills one Zealot there, and he loses every single Zergling. He's already lost eight Ligs for just one probe and a Zealot. Really bad trade for Jim, who is down six probes. Hass just calmly puts that down. I'll tell you guys, in these early game interactions, Hass does have fantastic micro, because he's used to these cheesy, kind of messy scenarios. He's so good at them, and now as the Adept comes out, he will secure a position to put this pylon on the low ground. Uh, he hasn't taken a second gas yet, so he might actually just drop a robo. He's just hit 100 gas. What? The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Who puts a forge down here? Who puts a forge? I have seen Hass play this style before. It's been a while, though. So he's going to go for a quick plus one and, um, and try to just do some, like, upgraded... Um, Sentry Immortal Zealot stuff, I think. And I think he will eventually get charged and whatnot. But this is just such a... It's such a bizarre build. It's almost like harking back to Wings of Liberty, you know? He doesn't even get a full wall off. He just does a semi-wall. So units can't come in the right, but they can still go in the left wide open. He's got two Adepts going across the map. Jim's being quite greedy in the follow-up, which I like. Because remember, Jim built so many Zerglings. Guys, he already lost eight. He built a total of 12. So he built two more than the standard 10 Zerglings. I mean, at least he didn't build 14... But nonetheless, his droning was not that quick. And uh-oh. Oh, no. Jim can't be affording this. He does lose two drones. Good pullback on the drones, though, and a nice sling micro. And sport trick, sport trick, sport trick. Oh, he pulls it away, actually. He has a little slow on the focus fire. Nicely done by Jim. So he does clean up those adepts in the end. That's totally fine for Jim. And you know what, guys? What I'm really proud of is no gas. So Jim is playing nice and greedy. He's just like drone two bases. He's going to take double gas now. And he's focusing on spending his drones. Only now drops a third hatch. But that's okay because the next minute he can keep building drones and turning them into gases. Roach Warren, Spore Crawler if he needs it. All that sort of stuff. And that's going to be really nice for him. Now, that Overlord is being spotted right now. And he could easily put an Adept up there. Which would uh, mean there's no way to hide. House is going to waste energy on a hallucination to make sure he kills it. I guess he wanted to scout anyway. Fair enough. And the Zealot Sentry is going to come out. These Zerglings taking a really awful fight. Jim, of course, just not watching those. Those Zerglings were kind of AFK'd outside the base. And uh, a lot more gateways on the way. So, guys, it's just going to be plus one, two gas, seven, seven gate. I think he's just going to drop two more gateways in the main and just go with just a shitload of plus one Zealots. He does start a Twilight. Okay, there is some transition behind this, but it's uh, an awkward scenario. That being said, Jim's actually going into Roaches this time, and Roaches will kick the shit out of these units if he can get enough of them. Six Roaches start immediately. I think that's good enough, man, to be honest. And if, as long as this Overlord hides, yeah, he just sends that to the left. And this is such an, a weird pressure, and Hass will take the forward base, as he always does with this style. Yeah, he takes this forward base. The game can get kind of scrappy, though. You've got to factor in that. An early plus one does change the maths a little bit in these situations. And I don't like this Roach or an Evo. That creates a bit of a choke point there. 
which Haas could use with a single force field to wall him inside his base. Now Haas is going to go for that third base. Watch out for the force field trap. These roaches... Don't, don't, no, 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 no. Oh, Jim went too far forward there. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, he only loses two for three force fields. Could be worse, but I really would like to see him uh, make another another Ravager or two here. Don't chase these units too far. Don't give any, any kills away. Haas is happy to skirmish because check this out. So Haas basically messes up the early game with this little squad, which remember at any point he can recall that to get it out if he has to. But he's got a third up. He's actually slightly out on workers and his upgrades are getting so far. He's going to have a plus two timing. There will be plus one for Jim rising, but that's not really going to be that much for him now. Oh, look at this. Jim getting a little bit hungry. He doesn't want to let those sentries home. He says, I want to punish you for this crazy move. And he might actually get a sentry or two. Can he do it? Zerglings are going to get one of those sentries. Uh, can they get a second one? No, he's going to pull on out of there. A few Zerglings for a sentry. That's probably all right. This is a scary push to do. But with charge not being done and so little range damage, you can see why he went for it. But now, as Haas says, guess what? Only two gases. He's actually going to add a third and a fourth. Oh, he's going to add a lot of Archons with this. Okay, so he's going to go mass sell at Archon. Four gases. He's going to get just this mineral line saturated. So he'll stop before 60 probes. Uh, he'll probably stop about 58, 59, at most 60 workers. Even though he's dropping a robo, I think Haas is just going to go for a giant charge Archon timing. Now for Jim, he's done a good job of recovering his workers, but he's kind of got to stop here. At most, just get these gases and just make as much Roach Ravager as he can. If he gets enough Roach Ravager together in a ball, he can survive. His Roach Speed's on the way. It's not there just yet. But that's such a big army. He's going for Ling Speed. He's building more drones. This is really bad. He cannot be affording this stuff. I mean, it's it's awkward because normally against any other Protoss player, I'd be like, you need to drone. You need at least 66 drones before you build units. But versus Haas in this style... I feel like numbers are the only thing that's going to keep Jim alive. Just raw Roach Ravager numbers. He does have a chance here. He's got a few Ravagers out, but he needs Roach Speed. He needs that plus one to kick in. Losing the fourth hatch is not the end of the world, to be honest. He'd like to at least kill a few units for it, though. Oh, no cancel. That's bad. Let's get two Roaches trapped up front. But actually, almost gets him out of there. And landing some Biles, but only hitting a single Zealot with him. He's going to start trying to start a step. Roach Speed's not quite ready. This is such a good timing. And remember, whenever the Archon hits those clumped up Roaches, it does big splash damage. Zealots get into the natural at the same time. That forces Jim to come back over and defend. Ah, nicely done. The way Haas is using those Zealots, messing up the rally to force the Roach Ravager into him. But great stutter step by Jim Rising. This plus one Roach Ravager really paying for itself. Zealots are going to run in on the third though. And at any moment, if you don't have units defending those workers, things can get hard. The Archons go down, as does the Sentry. He's got to defend his workers now. He's got to split into these bases. Zealots are trying to get in the main, but most of them have gone down. A few workers go down, but not too many. Overall, a fantastic hold by Jim Rising. Just barely enough units together. And I mean, Haas there, I really, I've got to criticize the fact that he did not use his prism quite the way I wanted him to. And the Archons did not do that much for him. So I really prefer if Haas didn't take all these gases because he's just making Archons with them, right? These are not units that do well versus Mass Roach Ravager until you've got a big core of Immortals up behind them. I would have loved to see him just hit with a big two gas Mass Zealot time timing warp zealots in the main while hitting the third base maybe run a few zealots in the natural as well but i think he needed to be pulling jim apart because he attacked two one directionally jim was able to just micro that ball of roach ravager really well now he's back in the game but there's zealots on the other side of the map waiting to backstab him he's got to be careful that he doesn't overextend into the batteries here only two archons in the immortal though that's not a lot of units the immortal goes down and Oh, Jim comes forward with some big focus fire. He's taking out all these important units right now. Both the mortals go down. One of the Archons going down. The Zealots are going to hit on the other side, though. Oh, the Prism in the main is not being unloaded. He does micro it. Okay, that will save the day there. The Roach Ravager on the third still doing very well there, tearing it all apart. But the main and the natural are isolated right now. Oh, no. Jim's going to lose his entire economy to these Zealot run buys. Everything going down at home. And this is way more damage for Haas than it is for Jim. Haas is in this position where he can just be warping in units he can increment out he's actually going unupgraded stalkers well i guess plus two stalkers but no blink is what i mean uh to try to make this happen now the roach ravager actually might kick the shit out of this i think has pulling probes here maybe a little overzealous uh one or two biles does land the stalkers doing all right there remember the zealots on the other side are now getting cleaned up but they've already killed 30 drones only 15 of the probes died in return the zealots one of the best units in a messy situation like that so this is often how Haas wins. He loses a fight. You think, oh, suddenly he's behind, right? When he's ahead, he throws the engagement away a little bit, doesn't get the, the damage he was looking for, gets behind, and suddenly he executes like an absolute bloody god. He just is like, oh, yeah, zealots in here, zealots in there. Pull back at home, defend, defend. Don't lose my probes. 
And he's he's in a massive lead. He gets the third base tonight. He's got Ark on Stalker. Zealot's building there. He's got a shield battery. I mean, Jim's going to try to split up and, and win the, the counterattack game. But he actually needed to just sit at home. He needed to, to get a bit more map vision up, get a bit more defense up. And uh, I actually think disengaging and running home was the right move. I also think one of the things I didn't mention, the reason why Jim had such a hard time, he wasn't producing. He was so focused on the attack. He had a bit of bank building up. His inject cycles were just getting ready. So those zealots hit him and... Instead of having roaches popping out and having a hard time dealing with it because they're kind of popping on top of zealots, he had nothing going on. He started the roaches as the zealots hit his base, and that's why he was caused so much trouble. And it looks like Hass here, once again, a clinic. I mean, he wanted to go for a cannon rush. He saw the 12 pool in that high ground gate. I think gave him a fantastic start here against Jim, and, and the prisms have just torn him asunder. Hass here with some great arc on micro, dismantling Jim Rising. A very clean 2-0 from Haas.